stitching and other stuff. So today is April 3rd, which is mind blowing that we're already in April. And spring is definitely here where we live and that where you live too. So yeah, it is. We've got cherry blossoms blooming outside and well, almost cherry. My fake, my ornamental plum tree is blooming. It's beautiful. It's pink. Yeah. And you I'm walk outside. My, you can... my lilacs are getting little buds. Like Ooh, I, very... haven't, I haven't looked at my lilacs. When you walk outside, you can smell fertilizer because they have oh. fertilized. Yeah, when you walk outside my house, you smell manure from where they're laying it on the fields down below. And the fertilizer it. smells better than your manure. But yeah, anyway. manure is awful. And I, I said the season where I want to open the windows and air out the house and let the air kind of move through, and I can't yet. And then pretty soon after that, it's too hot to really do that. So, yeah. but I'll have a few weeks probably between the manure and the and the heat. I have some very antsy little people next to me that I promised could go very first so that they can go play because they really want to be on but they also want to go play so I think all three of them are coming to show something that we all did together as part of our school so we did leather working this week as part of our just a fun thing that we did as part of our school day leather stamping really we weren't doing like cutting or any fancy work here I'll slide out more you guys let Rosie squeeze in. So why don't you each, Millie, show what you made and tell what it is. Okay. Made a bookmark. Ooh. Tree with the sun. Pretty. Butterflies and flowers. Mm -hmm. So we learned how to stamp leather. You want to show that one too? I made a bracelet. Oh, you guys buy a kit or something? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. from Amazon. Uh-huh. So I had the little imprints that you used to go next to it. Yes, it has stamps that you use. I can talk about it in a second, or maybe Rosie. What did you do, Rosie? You tell uh, us about it. It's upside down. It's upside down? Here, I'm gonna turn you this way. Um, so I did a sun. What did you do? How did you do it? What did you do? And there was a sun stamp and I put lots of them together. Mm -hmm. And then what, what, what is, what did you do? Oh, like how I made did you do it? Um, I pounded. Just a second, Lydia will show in a second, but you tell about it. I pounded um some stamps in to this leather with okay. the yeah the mallet that Millie showed. Oh, with the mallet. Ooh, fun. And then what did you do after you stamped it? We put on what is it called? Well, it's called goof goof proof. It was like a finishing thing. Mm -hmm. Somebody have my coaster. It's, I mean? It makes yeah. your bookmark or anything waterproof. Oh, okay. Yeah, it finishes it. It gives it, it kind uh -huh. of goes into the imprint where you did the stamps. Liddy brought over the things, so. so um, okay, Liddy, why don't you show yours and then you can show the. Oh, wait. Here, hop off. Okay, so um, I'm going to show mine in a second, but first, there's tons of little stamps like this. Okay, no then much. you slide them onto this thing and then uh -huh. you put it down onto like the leather and then you take the mallet and stamp and you it. it. Oh, fun. Uh, pound it in, just tap, tap so that it goes in. It's soft because you wet the leather a little bit with a sponge mm -hmm. and then it just imprints in. Did you show your, you didn't show yep. yours. So. Don't you to hold it up. Here's the first one Liddy did. Yeah. Oh, look at that. It's going this way. It's a bookmark. Uh huh. And I made this too. Oh, those are Sun Star. Mm hmm. And mom, and, and then I made my coaster. coaster. Oh, I like it. That was fun. Yeah. Now we have, but it also, so this is a kit from Amazon. Maybe I'll put the link in the show notes in case somebody would like to do this. I mean, it's kind of geared towards children, the kit is, but really. It doesn't have to be. It could be anybody who just wants to try it. It comes with like several of these leather strips to make a bookmark and several of these rounds to make coasters and then these little bracelets that snap and the mallet and the stamps and the, I think it was like $40 for all of it. And it came with a really fun instructional video in case you really got into leather working and wanted to know how to do the cuts and the fancy western wear type leather working anyways i'll put the link in the sh in the description box down below the girls also really are desperate to show something else okay come on 
<laughs> what could it be? What could it be? Are you coming in to show as well? Um, in a minute when I show my book. Oh. <laughs> Tell us why you want to show about that. Because it's really cute and I love it. And where oh. did it come from? Mimi. Why? Uh, for what? For Easter. For Easter. Yeah. Got a little package from Mimi yesterday, huh? From a little Does it have a name? Heidi. Heidi? Heidi? No, no it's short. short. Oh, it's Heidi. short. Oh, it was Hyacinth. Now it's Heidi. Oh, Heidi. No, it's short for Hyacinth. Okay. So, oh. so they got their little package yesterday. Boy, Mimi was sweating it, getting that in the mail. Because yes. even though Sarah was here last Saturday and I meant to send it all home with her, there was too much other activity going on. And I forgot. Lily has a little bit more crafting to show as well. Okay. okay. So I'm making my Totoro. Oh, look at him come along. Totoro. Totoro. Yes. But I cannot um, keep stitching on it because I need more threads. I have to buy, I need to buy some B5200 and some of the dark, the blue. I don't have any. I must have given it all to her on her little kit. Or okay. or maybe I've since put it in a project bag or something. So I'm going to need to buy them. Okay. And? Okay. Does it have a name too? Its name is Strawberry. Strawberry. Okay. It's like strawberry ice cream. Mm -hmm. It makes me want to have some strawberries. Yes. I'm making strawberry cake tomorrow for tomorrow. It's yummy. Yum. I'm, ex I'm excited about that. Bye-bye, sweetie. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Liddy has more crafting, other crafting? No, Liddy just did stamping. I don't know if she's stuck or what on she's some. Oh, she's been coloring again. She's gone back to her standby. Okay. I'm gonna, <laughs> that's trash right there. <laughs> I need to go to the dumpster and I forgot. <laughs> I was trying to move it to be out of the frame. No junk bags. <laughs> We're just, we're just real, okay. <laughs> craft, 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 craft. I know, that's kind of what my living room looks like, but. I just buy new baskets and fill them up. <laughs> Your dad loves it, I'm sure. he loves it. You need just like a big armoire that you just open, you'd overflow it, with, then you'd need another one, and then you'd need another armoire. <laughs> that closet where that basket's hanging, there's more craft in there. In fact, one whole wall is, is yarn and knitting stuff. And then there's stacks. Oh, bad. Well, I this is room. my old, we had like a space heater that looks like a fireplace and Jesse oh. bought it for me when we lived in our old house and didn't have a fireplace or any kind of way to, you know, have a fire. So we put it in the living room and use it as like, just as a space heater if it was cold, but also just to have the ambiance of a fire, but it died, like it broke and the, it fell and the legs broke. So I'm throwing it. In your bedroom in this house though didn't yeah you? so when we moved into this house our room doesn't have like any access to the wood heat and yeah. um so yeah it fell yeah. off like it was up in a on a shelf kind of and a kid knocked it down and it broke and I can't I don't want it to sit on the ground but the legs are broken broken not like you can't just like screw them back in there yeah, right. yeah. Yes, well, you have to get a, a new one of those, maybe a, a sturdier one, because that was cute up in your bedroom. It was cute. I'd like maybe a nicer one. Well, yeah. well, we are another week. We got another week. We're another week closer to a year of floss tubing. Another week closer to Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, it was nine months a couple weeks ago, so now we're probably about eight and a half months. I can't help it. I know. Yeah, I guess we're getting closer to Christmas every day. I was so excited this week. I told, I called Sarah. I got things written in my planner. <laughs> but the sad thing is, it's all just doctor appointments. <laughs> well, I know I was laughing because last year we were joking all the time. Like, I've got this really cute planner I got for the year and it's totally empty. I didn't even know where it was half the time because I had nothing to put in it anyways. My calendar is pretty full this year and not just with doctor visits, but... Things are kind of filling back up and we found good ways to cope. So yeah. I have my stitching, my stitching planner, but then my other one has the appointments in it. I'm also I told Sarah I've started um I'm taking control of my life again. And so I've been recording exercise and my eating and trying to just feel like I'm not just 
you know, I, I was thinking to myself, really, for the last year, I've just been eating my feelings. <laughs> And I can't keep like, eating my feelings. Like probably 75% of the world. <laughs> and it's time, it's, it's a wake up call. The other 25% are the people who don't eat when they're stressed and they've all lost weight this year. <laughs> why, why can I not be that kind of person? Man, I'd be so thin. I went to, when I went to the doctor this week, so I, I'm looking at having my thyroid, part of my thyroid removed because I have a nodule on it. And so I went to the doctor and they of course always are asking like, have you had any recent weight changes? I just looked at her like, Yes. Doesn't everybody like Has anybody come in here and said no? <laughs> she kind of chuckled and I was uh, like, Yeah, but I'm sure that's not because of my thyroid, to be honest. I think I would probably be losing weight if it was a thyroid problem. I've always been a feeling eater and it just had a lot of big feelings in 2020. <laughs> I'm I'm thinking back when we first went into lockdown. And I had six people living here, basically, two out in the trailer. And then my husband and I and my son and his girlfriend were here. And they were bored out of their gourds because they weren't working, those two, the two that were in the house. And school was all online for, for Ash. And so they just would take walks. And then they'd come in and they'd bake. And I mean, I always had, there was some stuff always, there was brownie. If it wasn't brownies that Sam made, it was this <laughs> really yummy chocolate chip Kahlua butt cake that Ashley kept making and that was like it was good but it was warm and it was really good the next day for breakfast so I'm it would just sit on the table and I would just walk by and I thought I can't believe that we you know I know if somebody was going out hey we're gonna go to Sonic anybody want a blast oh yeah I want a blast I want some ice cream every night <laughs> it just does me too do anything else anyway so i feel good about that it, it, i think spring does bring that about though i think there's a sense of urgency because you can't cover up in sweaters for the rest of the, <laughs> for the next five months uh, and now i have to bear my skin more <laughs> and oh big news i found my my mother of the groom dress yes it's so pretty so excited about that really pretty i ordered one online i just to see if i was going to like it and it showed up and i had other ones kind of lined up to order and i just i hadn't gotten around to it i thought i'll just order several and then send back what i don't want but by the time that one arrived i hadn't ordered any other ones and i love this one and i didn't have to go to shop i didn't have to go to the mall i didn't have to walk all over the mall looking it was probably the easiest wedding of my four kids outfits i've ever had yeah <laughs> i gotta find shoes though Oh, that's not going to be a problem for you. You always find shoes that are really cute. I can, but she, I was just going to wear black, but she kind of wants me to wear navy blue or silver, but I'm not going to wear silver. Oh, you can find something. I'm sure. That won't and be it has to be, I'm like everybody else is wearing these little strappy little wedge heels and that ain't happening. I'm wearing flats. My heels I'm days are gone. Sure. You can find some little navy flats. I, I will. Somebody will post a link in our comments about flats where you can find. Yeah. Anyway, so that was big news in my life. <laughs> big news. <laughs> Baby Junie is doing well. So just for any of you who are wondering, she's out of her isolate and into a regular crib and learning to take more of her food orally. And that's kind of the big steps next. I Over think. four pounds. Yeah, she's growing and she looks beautiful and she's alert. We're so thankful. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you for praying. Yeah. Yeah. We really see the cool. impact of that. And I got to snuggle my other baby niece yesterday because my brother and his wife <clears throat> drove the two and a half hours over to where we live because they could find a second COVID shot. But then it turned out when they got here, they couldn't because the place that they were supposed to be going ended up not having any of the Moderna second vaccine. They only had Pfizer. So anyways, we figured it out. Up, found a second. Back up on that though. They had appointments over here to do it on Monday, but they're leaving on a trip later. Oh, next oh so I didn't they realize they were, So they yeah. were just trying to do it earlier. They were trying to do it earlier. And I think the Yakima um, Fairgrounds is a federal mass yeah, it uh, is. vaccination site. So they could go. Yes. It was the wrong one. So Yeah. And so then they did end up finding some more over here that had it's actually where I went a few weeks ago that was, I got my vaccine. Um, and so they were able to get in for a second dose, but that meant that they came over and had some lunch and I got to snuggle that other baby, which was really fun. 
just like a special one more one more family member the baby of the family sam the one that getting married well he's not anymore really the baby but he was the baby in our family (laughs) he's the baby of our family and he's the last one to be able to get his shot they just opened up in our state on the 15th anybody over the age of 16 can get it so Mm -hmm. that'll be good good. we're having a vaccination party you got to come over for it (laughs) celebration man well we're let's see so we we're gonna do featured friends yeah before next right so this week so this is something that we've just started doing in case you've missed it where if you are interested in sending us a picture of a whip or a finish that you would like to have featured we would love to show a picture and tell about what you've done um just because we love this little community and so this week um, we're featuring one from our friend Heather Miller, and she sent us a picture of a finished project that I'm going to insert here. Hi ladies, I think this is an awesome idea and I am super excited and very much appreciate you offering a platform to display your viewer stitching. I am so proud of this fully finished design. It's called Exquisite Poinsettias from Christmas Ideas Magazine, 1994. I'm guessing a bit that I started it in 2008. It's signed as being finished in 2012 and I've just gotten it framed in March, 2021. Wow. I've loved this design ever since I laid eyes on it, and I truly can't but hardly believe it's actually finally up on my wall. I love that feeling. Done on a white slash antique white mystery linen, I'm guessing 28 count, DMC floss, yellow beads instead of French knots in the flower centers. Blessings to you all, Heather. So. Wow, so and that is a piece, man. And what a journey. <laughs> what a journey. That's that a piece. long I know, 2008 to 2012, and then finally framed in 2021. That sounds like most of my pieces. Thank you, Heather, for sharing that. Yeah, thank you. So pretty. Anybody else, we just want to be able to show your work, not just ours, because we don't ever have any finishes. And you don't have to send a finish, though. (laughs) Yeah, we don't have. (laughs) We're going to capitalize on your finishes, because we don't ever. (laughs) Because we're just all about the starts. (laughs) No, but it, we do want to see what everybody's working on because I really love that. And yeah. there's such a, so many patterns out there. And the older ones like this one is amazing. You know, I just look at it and think, whoa, I don't even know if I would even track all that. It just looks so overwhelming. But I know. You know when a piece grabs you, you just, you just, it just grabs you. I have several of those. <laughs> it just grabbed you. <laughs> just grabbed me. I've got- well, and I think the fun thing too about them. I think the fun thing about showing other people's finishes is that it increases the variety or whips like finishes or whips it increases the variety because it might not be something that I would have thought or chosen to do but somebody else watching might look at it and be like oh my gosh I really really love that and I want to start it so I think that's fun to kind of increase the diversity of what we show from just I know Tina from Tina Pitches talks about how she's got a floss tube and she's talked before about how she has a very um specific style Mm -hmm. and it's not the it's not the mainstream prim or it's Mm -hmm. not really cutesy um it's very um she has large pieces and and they seem very um complicated like specialty stitches and beading and, and they're gorgeous and so you know it's fun you know if you're a stitcher out there and you're thinking yeah i kind of i kind of would gear towards that too check out tina Mm -hmm. and but also tina send us a picture for us to um share if you want but there is such a wide variety of patterns and designers out there from old to new so anyway thank you guys that's fun i do have a finish it's not a fully finish and it's not super impressive it's actually not new it's probably my i don't know that i've shared this now i'm wondering if i shared this before but it was tucked away in a place where I wouldn't have thought it would have gotten to if I had shared it in the last year. 
I was doing some clean out today of like just memorabilia, like hospital bracelets and, and ultrasound pictures and birthday cards that I just tucked away and I, I created a place to put them. So this was in there. Have I showed this before? No, I, think okay. so, huh? I don't think so either. I think this might be the first thing I stitched. I was, or maybe the second. This is very early in my stitching career. I was probably like nine or something when I stitched this, like Millie's age. <laughs> yeah. And I have no idea what the design is. I don't even think I could begin to I'm find sure it. it was a kit. I'm pretty sure it was a kit. It was definitely a kit. Mm -hmm. And that's all I really know. I, I don't. But it's Easter's weekend. So it's, I know. It's I thought this was kind of perfect for Easter. Smile. Smile, it's a little bunny peeking over. And I think for uh, probably like an eight or a nine year old, I think the stitches are pretty good. Yeah, they are. Really good. Yeah, that yeah. had to be. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't have stitched that in high school. No. <laughs> I wouldn't have stitched this in high school? No. No. <laughs> Some of the stuff I stitch in high school is way better than what I'm stitching now. <laughs> no, but it's pretty good. Yeah. I remember working on this. Like I remember specifically working on this, which is interesting. Remember where we were living? I want to say it was an apartment. Oh. So I'd be even littler than eight or nine then. Because I think when you were nine, we were living in the rental house. Right? Yeah. I feel like it was an apartment. I have like an apartment. When you were, when you were nine, we would have had Austin. And Austin was born in the rental house. So. I feel like this was before that. This could have been like six or seven. Mm -hmm. I think you started, I started you really young. I think you were like five. This might be the very first thing I did. Because I, mean, I remember because I, I cross-stitched all the time and I'm sure you were interested in it. Mm -hmm. I, I just, yeah, I feel like I learned it. around five, but I thought there was something else I did first. I showed that Daisy Kingdom one I did several episodes ago, like I think. Did I ever show that? Oh, like maybe almost a year ago. Yeah, but that was bigger. It was bigger and the holes were smaller. The fabric was a That's smaller. I think this was probably your first thing, maybe. This might be my very first. Isn't that funny? Mm -hmm. it has dust on the back, but mm -hmm. that is my <laughs> very impressive finish. <laughs> Ancient. Well, I know someday when we move and I have to start packing this house up, <laughs> I will find mine. I know I still have it. I would not yeah. have gotten it. It's yeah. in some place somewhere. So anyway, cute, cute, cute. Well, what do you have for whips today? You want me to go first this time? Okay, let's see make in some room. Well, this week, that's Millie. Just kidding. So I have several little bits of work I did on lots of different things. So I started on the next clue for my dreaming girl. Oh, let me just organize these threads here for a second. I have a couple just coming off. Still, but I made a little bit of a mistake somewhere in the counting along here. So I, and it was late and I was tired. I didn't feel like figuring it out. Along the hair or along the thing hanging off of her hair? Well, basically, this is a little high in comparison with this, according to where the pattern is. And I just didn't, but this is correct from the hair. So I don't really know if I made a mistake in the hair or if I made a mistake. Oh, actually. I think I, did I figure it out? No, I didn't figure it out. No, I'm not sure what I made a mistake on. I just don't know. You'll be able to just budget though. I mean, I would think you could just budget. I probably can, but I was too, it was, I was just tired yeah. and I didn't. Like, trying to figure that out might be more, more work than it's worth because they're just. Yeah. Yeah. If I have to like tear out anything, I'm, it's not worth it. And I can probably just fudge yeah. the pattern a little bit and make it work, but I didn't have the energy to even problem solve yeah. it at the time. So I just ended up putting it away that night. So then I also worked this week on, I was trying to finish up my whip go goals for March and I did not finish this, these goals up because I was missing the thread I needed for the house and looked everywhere. I knew it had probably just fallen off my lap. So I looked and looked and looked and looked, couldn't find it. Last night I looked on the floor and it's like right there in the middle of the floor. What was your whip go goal? Not just just hours wise, you mean? Hours wise. I was trying to get more hours. I think I still have like two and a half hours left to work on this to check off my March with Google for this because I couldn't work on it because I couldn't find that thread. You can still finish it and mark it off though. I will. Yeah, I will. Okay. I just was trying to get it done. I didn't understand that last year. I thought if you didn't get uh -huh. it done in the month that you said you were going to get it done, you didn't get to mark it. But uh -oh. I'm sure if you I get it done. Well, that's what I've seen other people say. 
And somebody is doing like, they're not doing monthly goals or doing yearly goals. What was I watching? <laughs> so they've got, you know, like it'll say, their square might say, you know, button up, but it won't have an hourly. It will have like a yearly. So she'll work on it that month. But if she doesn't meet the yearly goal, wherever she's written that down, then she doesn't get to mark it off by the end of the year. So basically they're just not worrying about what numbers are called. Well, she can't claim it until it's been worked though. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. So say, say this month's number. So was she'd like already that. hit that goal for that piece by November and they called that number. She would just get to check it off without. Yeah. Her. Or yeah. But also, so say she hadn't worked on it and it got called for April and her goal was to work five hours in the year on it. Okay. She, anything she does after it's called count, I think counts towards that five hours. Oh, so she has to wait till it's called. Yeah. I don't think you can claim time on them before it's called. Cause she'll say things like, you know, it's not going to be called again. This is the only time this number is going to be called. So that's my, I, I feel like it's anything going forward from when it's called, but I, you know what? I have no idea. I'm not participating in any of the challenges. I haven't gotten Mac together to even figure out anything. Yeah. So I'm just doing it. Know, we go again, I showed this, right? So this is winter yeah. snapper land. Yeah. I've, I've done three of them. I'm finished with three. So I'm on number four, the villa. And yeah, so here's where I ended up being. I'm working on that house. I got that little side of the fence done. Not as much progress as I would have liked, but thankfully I did find that thread color. The bobbin just, I don't, I honestly don't know what happened because I look like, it's like literally on the floor at the, where my feet would be in the chair. And I know I like got down on my hands and knees and looked all around. I don't know. Mystery has solved it's at least back. But it means lost away bags. <laughs> I know. But it fell off my lap like that night when I was working on it and I couldn't find it anywhere. So I have no idea. Maybe the little fairies came and took it and then brought it back to me. Where did you end up finding it? Literally on the floor. Like I sit in my chair. It was on the floor where my feet sit. But I know I got up. I moved the ottoman. I looked all underneath the chair, under the couch, under the coffee table. Like I looked everywhere. Yeah. I don't know. Then mysteriously last night I was cleaning the house and I just looked down and there it was. I just needed to borrow it for a little bit. I worked on my Daisy Girl a little. Not my Daisy Girl. What's she called? Gathering eggs. Gathering eggs. Daisy Gathering Girl is that other one I did a long time ago. So I'm starting on the sides there. Oh, look at her. Yeah. Love it. So she's basically done except her little shoes on the bottom there and the beading and the back stitching. So, okay, there's still quite a bit less. Basically done. <laughs> She's basically done. Except for. Except for all the background and back stitching and the beading. So, so that's where it will look like when it's finished. I really, I just love it when I get to work on this one. So I decided to pull it out last night wow. or the night before. And I am trying to finish Milk and Cream Co. I'm not going to show this is so close to being done. I'm not going to show the pattern picture right now. I'm just vertically filling in that section mm -hmm. out there. It's sort of boring. Cute though, but it's, I like the effect of having it filled in. So it's worth it. Yeah. I'm hoping I have enough of that eggshell. I got another whole thing that you had sent me. So if not, I can always get you. I did finish my WISCO goal of eight hours on my toile sampler. And I think I have that house all like. Right a working copy on that. Are you working on that out right out of the book? Ugh. Yeah, I should probably make a copy, huh? Wow, it drives me nuts. I finished the framing on that house. Oh my gosh, that is a lot. I know that was a lot of counting. Like, thankfully, uh -huh. it's symmetrical. So if I kind of knew what the pattern of the stitch was for that row, right on the one so, side, I just knew to keep going. But yeah, one stitch. I don't, I don't think I made any mistakes. It seems like it all is lined up right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like this one too. This one and my Daisy Girl. No, my Gathering Eggs. Mm -hmm. Might be my favorite. Yeah. To work on. It's probably just that it's on even weave. Lugana. Uh huh. That's a sign. Okay, I have one more. Una más. My Joyful World border. So 
I have this side done and the bottom done and almost finished with this side. I had to rip out a little bit of the brown on top because I realized I had miscounted a long time ago. Wow. But it wasn't, it was like 20 stitches. So close. I know, then I just have to go probably what, three quarters of the way across the top. And it's I mean, you could, have that, you could have that done in a month. I could, I really could. It wouldn't be that hard. It is a whip go. It is one of my whip go ones, I think. Let me see, I put it on whip go. It's my number eight square. So if eight gets called and I've already done it, then I don't know. I guess I just get to cross it up. I might plug something else in there. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I think some people do. Give myself another goal. But yeah, I really am so close to having that completely finished. And that is all that I worked on this week. Well, that was a lot. I knitted a, I knit a little bit on the baby sweater, but not enough to really show. Show it. Okay. Show it. Well, let's see. I started off with last Sunday. No, no, no. I did not really stick with our what I my, my meal told what my wheel told me to do. I really just was feeling just not feeling it. I just wanted to stitch what I wanted to stitch. Yeah. But one thing it did call for was my Easter. Oh, Easter so deep. I filled in more of this and I did his little scarf. He's so cute. Isn't he cute? I do love him. <laughs> I'm gonna work on him tomorrow on Easter. Yeah. When everybody goes home. Um, so I worked on him. So he got some good love. I worked on, oh, I did, this was also on my wheel. I, I shouldn't say I didn't do any of it. I worked on my Mary and Minty, which was the free um, with a needle and thread sal for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And I'm working on this. And so I, I think I only had this and part of this done. So I did all of those and yeah. I started a little bit of green. Cute. Such a cute pattern. Did you end up buying the called for threads? I did. Although I have a feeling what I'm using for this, I did not. I think I. I'm yeah. trying to remember because when I did it, I, I changed the reds around because I felt like I didn't maybe like the red she called for there or something. Yeah, I think I'm using a different one. I think I'm using. I'm going to turn my light on and see if my color is. I did use my own. I'm using Cupid. And I don't think Cupid was on here. No, that doesn't sound familiar, but. No, it wasn't. She had. Oh, she had, I think was red licorice. Mm -hmm. I didn't have red licorice. I had Cupid at home. Okay. So you just used one. I just used, I just wanted a deep red. So anyway, mm -hmm. I kind of like him. I, um, I, I'm not kind of, I do like it. And I do want to get it done so I can have it for next year. And it wouldn't take much, you know. Yeah. Again, just time. Just time. I also worked on very briefly my dumpster fire friend. In case you're new. So Lindy Stitches, dumpster, dumpster fire friends forever, <laughs> flames and smoke. And it was, she designed it to give to that, to stitch, to give to that person that got you through the pandemic kind of in mind. So I'm doing it for my friend, Sue. And um, I still haven't fixed my hair. So she still looks funny, but I did do finish her top and I did this and I'm filling in, but I'm bopping all around so I can really get the mm -hmm. smoky. Um, this one I just did straight across. Mm -hmm. I like one. that one too. Yeah, I'm just filling it in as you like it. Yeah, and I thought, oh, this is nice to, to just do the outline. It was a simple outline. So, and then just fill it in. Fun. So if there's another hole, you know, the words are down here and the border comes down here. So there's a little ways to go, but um, yeah. It's it, it kind of sums up 2020 forever in my mind. Um, and then I worked very briefly yesterday because this was um because it's April. It's my joyful world cell that Sarah just showed, and it's the April. And that's by Snowflower Diaries. I forgot to mention or talk Money about it. In the world. Oh. And so I counted down. I figured out where to start my second layer here. Whoops. 
right here. So I started my purple flowers underneath February. Cute. I'm doing, what did I'm doing? Three, four rows of three. It's under January, right? You said February, but. Oh yeah, sorry. Oh yeah. Oh. Anyway, this, this is hard to put down. Mm. I really like, when I, once I get started on this, it's really hard to. Yeah, it's crazy to me that I stitched like that whole huge thing in one year. Like it takes me so yeah. long to stitch anything. I know. And it's but it was just so fun to stitch. And I had a goal of doing one a month and they were all on that same fabric. So I didn't have to gather anything but threads and yeah. It's it's made so it really easy and fun. That way in the beginning. I just, you know, I would have been done too. I think. Well, anyway, so I did that. Well, the other thing I worked, yeah, hopefully. The only other thing I really worked on, I, I did stitch a ton. I knew a little bit, but I don't really know what I did. But I did work on my dreaming girl. And I got her neck and her her shirt or blouse or t-shirt or whatever you want yeah. to call it. You've got kind of the big chunks of stuff done. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to working on the little motifs. Mm -hmm. so, and I changed the color just a little bit uh, to that pinkish color in her shirt. It called for a gold, but mm -hmm. I didn't like the gold. I don't know. I just didn't like the way it looked. So like although that. there's going to be plenty of gold over here. So hopefully I'll like it. Uh, anyway, yeah. so that is about everything I actually stitched on. I, yeah, that's it. All right. So yeah. what are you reading these days? What am I reading? So hold on a second. Um, I am reading, I'm still reading Thrush Green. The one that's the um by Miss Reed. Miss Reed. Yeah. Um, but I did get the new Maisie Dobbs. So I need to start the one before the one that I just got. And of course, your dad, who loves her too, listened to the brand new one on audio from the library. He put it on hold at the library because you have to put things on hold like months ahead. So that when they are released, you can get it. He's already listened to it. He goes, you want to hear about it? I'm like, no, I don't want to hear about it. And then about an hour later, I'll go, you want to hear it? I want to talk about Maisie Dobbs. I'm like, I don't want to talk about Maisie Dobbs. I'm like a book behind. Thank so, you for wanting you to spoil it. Oh my gosh. So I do want to start that. I do have his book light because that's, I bought that on a hard copy. Yeah. So I just need to go to bed and do it. Not stay up so late stitching. I did go to bed early, earlier, I wouldn't say early, but earlier part of this week, but I just basically went to bed and went to sleep. I didn't even read every night. Yeah. Um, I was tired and yeah, just tired. And I'm yeah. finding that if I let myself get overtired, I feel really sick. Mm -hmm. I get, dizzy. I think part, of, I get off balance. Mm -hmm. I don't feel good. And I thought, okay, this has to stop. Yeah. I wonder, yeah. What are you reading? Well, I'm still reading Spindle's End mm -hmm. and enjoying it. Super fun. That's by Robin McKinley. And it is a retelling of Sleeping Beauty and a totally like imaginative retelling. You're reading the other ones by her? I've read Beauty multiple times and love it. And that's the only other thing I've ever read by her. So I have Outlaws of Sherwood, which is a retelling of Robin Hood that will probably go in my pile eventually. Um, so I'm really enjoying that. That's kind of my fun book. And then I'm reading, um, I, I picked up to read ahead um, Lydia is about, we just finished Oliver Twist reading that together, or we're going to this week finish the last couple chapters. And then her next book for school, I usually kind of try to read along with her, some of her books, because then by the time Millie and Rosie get there, I've already reread, pre-read them. She's about to, supposed to start the book Kim by Rudyard Kipling. And so I was reading, I've started reading that. I've never read that before. I've read his just so stories multiple times with the girls and they're funny and enjoyable. This is like super different. And I felt like I was having to work really hard to understand a little bit what was going on because um, I, I don't know if he like assumes you know more about the time and the culture or whatever yeah. is happening. So I found a um, good kind of like compa companion right. discussion. That, yeah, like a, like a Cliff Notes, but online that I'm using to kind of so that I know this is what I need to talk with her before she read, you know, she needs to understand this about Buddhism or cause it's really a big exploration of different religions and people oh, wow. groups in India. Cause it takes place in India and really interesting stuff. I mean, I, I think we'll enjoy it, but so that's what I just started this week, but it's not quite as fun 
at this point to read as she's gonna... reading that by herself and then you guys discuss it or are you reading it out um loud? i might read it out loud to her that's why i was pre-reading it some to figure out if that was one we were going to need to read together or if i could get her started and then hand it to her with oliver twist i ended up reading the whole thing out loud to her partly because we were just sure. doing it together but it's pretty high level books yeah they're pretty high level and she's only fifth grade so i read that one to her and i suspect i'll probably read this one to her I don't know what's happening here. Bathroom, I guess. Was she making a face? You making a face? No. Stompy. Very purposeful. No, that's just how she walks. She walks like a like a gat. <laughs> walks, like, walks like Sam. Walks like Sam. Um, anyways, like yeah. Sam. So I haven't yet decided how much of it she'll be independent with and how much I'll do. Excuse me. I'm getting a mom can we question. What? Can we go play upstairs? Yes. Please, please go play to the neighbor's house. Please. <laughs> run like the wind goodbye <laughs> goodbye so that's what i'm reading um okay. yeah okay paul do you have hall this week <clears throat> i do have hall a little bit so first of all barbara anna started another mystery stitch along and it's dreaming frida and it's frida what's her last name Kahlo, Frida Kahlo. Yeah, the artist. I'm saying that right. I've only ever really seen it written. So I'm assuming it's was, um, Mexican, right? Mexico, Mexican artist. I think so. Yeah, I don't know much about her art, but I love Barbara Anna. So I signed up, of course, because I'm a joiner. And it's definitely going to have like a Southwest feel. That's the part one there. And so it's got a cactus, which is kind of cute. The kitten. Yeah, that is cute. So I went to Joanne's and I bought the floss for it, all in that cup. And I bought myself a new cup too, which your dad is also going to love because he loves it when I stack the cupboard full <laughs> of mugs. Yeah, uh, it's cute. And then the other thing is haul that I got from One Two Three Stitch because of Carolyn Zook from C Zook Stitch. She shared these um, maybe right after Christmas or I feel like, or maybe after her big power outage during the Valentine storm, she had a big, she had a episode where, and it says something about lots of haul. And I seem to really, really love seasonal calendar kind of pieces, obviously, because I'm loving Joyful World. This dreaming girl cell that Sarah and I have shown, that's all the little motifs are seasonal. There's a there's a spring, summer, fall, and winter. And she showed these. They're from Pine Mountain Designs. And there's a leaflet for every month of the year. And I, there's a couple that I'm, they're okay. I'll probably do them if I really want to do a whole set of them. They're, they're not big. They're six by four and a half, six by four and an eighth if you do them on 32 count linen. So anyway, I loved marches. Oh. That lion and the lamb and the flowers and the kites. I loved it. And they are what? <laughs> There's a child behind me whispering questions, like thinking she's being so discreet. But these are like they're little, but there's a lot of stitching. Yeah. Okay. And then the April one, love it. It's going to be kind of hard to see because of the coloring, but it is got. It's like a half of a kid, a person with rain slicker and boots oh, and the bunnies cute. and the April showers and the bird in the nest. Aren't they just so cute? They're really cute. Uh, I could get on board with these. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they are a variety. I did look at, I just only bought these first two and they do use general arts and some DMC. I think there might be a couple that only use DMC, mm -hmm. but I thought, oh my gosh, for the variegation in that yellow, I really wanted the fancy floss. I don't think I could find all the ones I needed for the lion, but I think I'm pretty close. But I did buy several um, general arts to go along with it. I found well, in weeks, obviously. There's a weeks. Cute. Yeah. There are really pretty colors. Look at this um, peacock. Oh, that's pretty. And then there's this one. Ooh, in. Huckleberry. Oh, that's pretty. Why is that called Huckleberry? I don't know. <laughs> that doesn't look anything and like Huckleberry. Anyway, so these are really cute. 
and they're not necessarily stitched all on the same kind of fabric. I think each month they call for a different fabric, which is kind of fun. So that is really all the haul, and I haven't really ordered anything um, new. I have no business ordering anything for a while. <laughs> no business at all. That is I have also not bought anything this week, but I do have some stitchy kindness. Um, so there's a story behind this. Back close to the beginning of the year, when people were posting on the WIPGO Facebook group about what they were doing for prizes or something, mm -hmm. I think I commented and said something along the lines of, because a lot of people were choosing, they, they, they would reward themselves with um, project bags every time they would get a bingo, which is great. I just don't really have the budget for that. So I had said as an alternative, I was gonna choose to kind of slowly gather the materials I need for spring at Hawk Run Hollow next year. Outside. So I had said I was going to gather up like floss and fabric and the pattern for spring at Hawk Run Hollow because I love that one. And it's kind of an investment to gather up the materials for it. So I thought each bingo I would get, I would choose a chunk of that stuff. And somebody really sweetly said to me, I would love to make you a project bag to use as like a win for one of your bingos. And I thought that was so sweet. So her name is Kay, Kay Molinex. And she messaged me on Facebook. So at this, I don't even think she knew we have a floss. To, like this, she was just saying, hey, I would love to make you a floss. Uh, she has like a, she loves to sew and make project bags and stuff. So she made me and sent me this gorgeous project oh, bag. Oh, how pretty. Out of the kindness of her heart. So Kay, I, I doubt you're watching, but I'm going to send you a link to this just so I can verbally say thank you. Um, I told her, <laughs> I told her my girls were already trying to steal it. And she said, do your girls, do you have daughters that stitch? And I said, oh yeah, they, they love to stitch. And so she wants to make them project bags to send them to, which is oh, so, oh, so look at this beautiful stitching and fabric. Oh, um, pretty. I love that stripey fabric. Isn't that cute. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. So thank you, Kay, if you're watching or if you happen to watch. I will love this and it's actually back. the perfect size for me to put my snow clean in. I was just wishing for a slightly bigger project bag because she's currently in just oh, one, yeah. of, um, uh, one of these, my big snow clean with my Q-snap. It doesn't fit in this, like, who are we kidding? It's like, oh, <laughs> this is what my snow clean looks like. It's just like this. So this will be perfect. I think I'll be able to slide that Q-snap in here. And, yeah. and probably zip it too. If not, really? I'll find another one that I need to put in there. Really pretty. That was really special. To people are very people sweet. People are so kind. I, yeah, so kind. And that's just off of Facebook, so. I know that was just like really random and I wasn't like, I wasn't trolling for a gift or something. I was just saying, because I'm not doing this, this is my yeah. alternative, which well, I'm I think, yeah, a lot of people were posting, so, you know, and people were getting ideas from people. Mm -hmm. and, doing so um, I but I was just like blown away that was so sweet so kind very sweet yeah. yeah lucky lucky girl I know I feel very really really lucky um that's the only haul I have I didn't buy anything this is birthday this is like Christmas in April in our family because my husband's birthday is this month and Millie and Rosie both have birthdays this month so I'm not spending like much money on anything fun. Exactly. I'm going to do some birthday presents. But um, our next thing that we usually do is our giveaway. Do you want to talk about, let's see. So last week we were giving away, do you want to show? Yes, I have it. From um, Barbara Tingley Petal Pusher, we were giving away spring primrose. Yes, and that is going to... Let me make sure I have the name right. Yes, well, I know. I don't know why I'm double checking. It's Brenda Foy. So Brenda, you win this as well. So I think you said you just had sent off the one that she had won. Oh, I was behind. Was she behind. got Be Happy out to you, I think, earlier this week or last week. I think I did it on Wednesday. So hopefully she'll get it soon. It's first but class, so. You also win this one. So congratulations, yeah. Brenda. Yay. And then this I, oh, I was going to say, Sue Allen, I think yeah. you won this one. It has not gone out, but it will go out this week when I send out this one. <laughs> and if you're waiting for something from me, 
I'm still trying to get it together. Wait for my magazine, girlfriend. I know. I almost bad at this. Mm -hmm. Real bad at this. But I'm gonna try to do that this week. I said that every week for about a month now. So this week, <laughs> if you're lucky, one, one winner may or may not receive this in the mail someday from me. <laughs> Um, I would really say mail it to me and I'll mail it out, but that wouldn't really help. <laughs> so in fairness, our post office has bizarro hours and it closes by like 430 every day. And if you don't, and they also close for like an hour to two in the middle of the day for lunch. So there's like a small window in the morning and the smaller window in the afternoon. And if I can't like arrange my life around it, so anyways. In fairness to me, you pay for late living out in the country in your dream. No, it's just what happens. It's just what happens. Actually, I didn't tell you this, but so the mailman at the little community, I don't know, the one of the nearest towns. We're kind of in between two different little towns. He's really nice. I really like our little po the postmaster at the little post office there. And I don't know. He, I don't know if he just sees this as like a service that he loves to do. I don't know why he's still here because I would want out of this community in the mm -hmm. well I I just think it's a hard situation so they rent this building and a few weeks ago I went into mail stuff that was going to go out to viewers and the roof had leaked because of the snow melting so this was like February I guess and ruined their debit machine and their router and their computer everything was trashed and they had to just replace everything so I couldn't mail anything that day so also in fairness to me but he told me, I told him the last time I came in, he had a substitute there that day. And he said, oh yeah, that's the second time that's happened where the roof has leaked and we've ruined everything. Then he said, have I told you about the time that I came to work here for three weeks with no running water? <laughs> it's like, what? He said, yeah, I brought gallons of water so I could flush the toilet all day. <laughs> oh. And then he told me that last week, the door, the like entrance door to get into this, the lobby where you um, can check your PO box fell off its hinges. Like he was like helping me out to the car and the door, just like the hinges just broke off. <laughs> he had to stand there for a half hour until someone could come help him. The United, States, the United States Postal Service, it's not because they're spending money willy nilly. Well, and this is not the post, I mean, so this town is little, there's not like a lot of building options and it's the landlords. It's on the landlord. They don't own the building. They just are renting it from whoever. Yeah, but... mm -hmm. No. I was like, well, we're glad you're here. <laughs> I love this. Okay, so just in case you're wondering, this is like ribbon. It comes with the whole kit. So we've got ribbon and beads and the threads. It's just really only stitching is this and everything else must be beads. And ribbon. Yeah. What's the pink? The pink is beads. And then I think there might be red beads behind. Yeah, there's wow. red and green beads. Wow. In there okay. as well. So um, I'm sure there's directions on how to make that cream, like that meringue pie look on top. And then this adorable. Oh, it's Riolis. It's Riolis. And it says Dolce Vita, like sweet life. And um, I don't, I didn't think ahead about a good word. Your favorite kind of pie. 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 What's the word pie? Oh, the word pie. pie, which is my favorite dessert, except ice cream. Yeah. What's pie. your favorite pie, Mom? My favorite pie is a really good cherry pie, but it has to, mm. it I has to, like Costco makes a really good cherry pie. And our top foods that closed years ago in their bakery, they had the most wonderful cherry pie and it wasn't the gooey, gooey cherry. It was like they were sweet tart cherries and mm -hmm. the crust was perfect. And there was like a little layering of sugar always on top that was kind of baked in. Oh, those pies were so good. Did it have a crust? It had the top crust. Sure, yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. If they were still open during the pandemic, I would have ate those feelings too, I'm sure. <laughs> So and they were made right there. Yeah. They were really, really good. But I like Costco's. I like berry pies, but I don't, I'm not a big fan of anything with seeds. Oh, I like, so like I like the flavor of blackberry pie, but oh my gosh, those seeds kill me. Rab, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, they just are part of my teeth. Yeah, what's your favorite pie? Well, I really like pumpkin pie. I really love custard pies like that. Mm -hmm. Um, 
but I also, I love pie in general, like way more than cake. Mm -hmm. I also really like berry pies. I don't know that I've, I, I don't know that I ever had that pie from Pop Foods. I usually don't think of liking cherry pies that much because they're so sweet. Like the ones with the sickly sweet filling are too like. No, these you they like, use a different kind of cherry. They didn't use the mm -hmm. glaze. I'd probably like that because that's kind of what off putting about cherry pie to me. But I do consistently like pumpkin pie. Mm -hmm. Well, how many more months until fall? <laughs> nine months till Christmas is about six months till fall. So there you go. Oh gosh. <laughs> Do okay. you have uh, plans? Nope. Sir, <laughs> no. Go to the post office. I have plans. I have plans. <laughs> yeah. Um, Here we go. I don't know. Let's see. No. Oh, I got plans. I don't have any plans particularly. My new magazine monthly for April started and I shared a little bit about this. So I'm going to continue with my March piece which was the Barbara Anna spring in my heart one because the theme is April showers and my reasoning is April showers bring me flowers and there's flowers on this. So yeah, I didn't want to start another magazine. I want, I really want to get this done. It could be done with another month of work on it. Oh yeah. And uh, across it was rain. So I am planning on starting my hearts, hearts and pines, hearts and pines. Uh, oh, yes. I always forget uh, that that's what that piece is because the name and the R I'm getting the R for rain out of um, Richards, which is her last name. Mm. Burjo, Barbara Burjo, and that that's taking the place of my last one that I had started the sleigh ride. Um, Joyful World April is on there for um, April A. I is going to be Things of Summer by Alicia Paulson because there is a iced drink. <laughs> so that's my eye. And this is, I just finished, I think I showed this recently and I had just finished the swimsuit. Mm -hmm. So I have, um, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more motifs. And they're not necessarily all tiny. So it, it's, it will get done this month probably, but I'll make, I'll chip away at it a little bit more. So that's that one. And then the N is going to be, um, it's patterned by Natalie, Natalie uh, Cichon. It's the Jardin Privé. And I have a picture of this plus um, Bramble, which is kind of a greenish. I love this. So this is going to be a new start. And those all have either, um, they're all, well, Joyful World is start and finish that April. And then the rest of them, and then it's to finish the magazine monthly Barbara Anna piece. And the other ones are just three hours of stitching. My whip go is my hoity toity. And um, what's my whip go? And my joyful world. It's the second time that one's been called, which kind of is a gimme for me. I can't remember what it was called this month. Um, I can tell you. It was. Um, I get to the right page in my planner here. Because, whoops, where'd you go here? That's bingo. That's bringo, I mean. I don't need bringo. Okay, she called. Um, three and. I thought I wrote it down here. Three and 21. Okay. I better circle those on my thing. I guess I do have some plans because I should probably work on those some. Yeah, what are those for you? For me, it's, I had done a square just for Alicia Paulson's, Paulson's Things of series. Yeah. And I think I was right. the last one, Things of mm -hmm. Fall. Is that the one I'm working on? Yeah, Things of Fall, I think. Mm -hmm. And then my, oh yeah, I'm, I bet I could finish this this week. I think I said that last week and I didn't even work on it. My Lily Violet, oh. Primavera, the spring piece with the flowers coming out of the basket. If you I could, follow her, if you follow Lily Violet on Instagram or Facebook, she just released a freebie for Easter and it's adorable. So cute. So cute. I gotta figure out how to do that. Okay. And then I did I did spin my wheel, even though I didn't follow it last week. So Easter peep, I just chose on my own to work on tomorrow. Yes. And it's so cute. I know. I kind of just want to stop everything and start that. My, um, I'm also for Monday winter, I'm doing snow garden, which I did not do the other week when I called, when it was called, 
because I was being rebellious. I don't know what the deal was. Uh, and then you'll be happy to see this, Sarah. This guy called for me for Tuesday. It's my gathering eggs girl. Oh, yay. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Making a working copy on this one has saved my life. Um, Hearts and Pines, which I just showed, is going to be for my Wednesday. Dumpster Fire Friends is Thursday. And Friday, Halloween squirrels are coming out again. <laughs> Until I work on that thing, the wheel's going to keep picking it. Like you need to do it. And then, um, my other Saturday piece for next week is a uh, Shepherd's Bush. Terrible, terrible picture because they still have never updated how they do their pictures. <laughs> the boy, I don't know why. I mean, they're cute, but like yeah, it's even in person, I can barely see this. <laughs> I, know, I know. I don't understand because like you could just lay it down and put all those things like on top of the frame. Like people do that. I know. I know. Anyway, it, I've so I've got Peter done. This is a companion to Sophie's Roses that I did. Um, I don't know if I've shown that recently, but she's done, but not framed. And I thought I would frame them at the same time, apparently in the next century. <laughs> but um, so I've got him done. I've got the rake done. I'm working on this border. It's vegetables. And it's cute. That's a cute border. It is a cute border, but oh my goodness, is it tedious? <laughs> <laughs> so tedious. It's on like, I don't know, 32 count and you're coloring, you're changing colors all the time. And here's a rub guys. Okay, first of all, my pattern, look at my pattern. You're giving me flack for working out of a book. My pieces are at least not even red or bent or worn. So I have not only this border of vegetables and then this inner border of black and white, there is another, there's another border. I think it's satin stitches or eyelets or something all around the outside. You're not gonna do that. You know, <laughs> this this got called a couple of weeks ago when I respawn. I thought, no. <laughs> not, not in the mood. What? Not in the mood for you, kid. Not in the mood, get out of my life. <laughs> what is that outer border? I don't, know, I don't even remember what it is. They are, yeah, it's satin stitches and they go across and then they go down. And I've done these. Satin I've done the one that look like stars. Is that what satin stitches are? This is don't bother stitch. showing the picture because we won't be able to see it. Satin stitch is what this is. Oh. Work, you know, itty bitty, bitty. Then you go up a hole and then you go up a hole. And then she has you drawing a line, uh, drawing, crossing you put your pen out, and then you draw a line in your pattern. Right on the fabric, there. It's yeah, and I've done enough of, than stitching. I've done enough of these patterns to know exactly how it's going to go down, which is never really good the first time around. I do have plans. I take it back. Are you still? Do you have more plans? Uh, no, that's it. And I just my need it. Is, by the way, just don't hold your breath. This might not make an appearance next week. <laughs> it better. It got called. It better. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. So my goals now. I just needed to think about it for a minute. Oh, I would okay. like to work for two hours each on my two whip go April pieces, the Lily Violet one, which I'm pretty sure I could probably finish in a week or two. And then things of autumn two hours. And then I want to finish my Whipco March goal for the snapper land. I like to finish it close to the month yeah. that I did it. So I don't just put it off. And I said last week that I really wanted to start that piece. Um, the It's like vegetable. It's a list of vegetables. Yeah. But I didn't get to it this week because I need to pull out the flosses and I just need to buckle down and do it. And I haven't done it. So those are my four goals. Maybe I'll like specifically assign them to each day of the like a specific day so that I actually like do them. Right. Okay. Let's see what I can get up. Yeah. Yeah, you can do that. Um the last thing that I have jotted down that we need to talk about is our Zoom chat next week. Do you have anything else besides that? Nope, that's the last thing I have okay. on so we have gotten several emails from you lovely people who are interested in joining us next week for another Zoom chat. Uh -huh. um, so that'll be really fun. I'm excited. And it's going to be next Saturday, April 10th, 2021, in case you're not watching this live. 
Um, did we decide to do it at noon? We decided to do it at noon Pacific oh, yeah. time. So that would be three Eastern. And then you're on your own to figure it out from there. Um, and if you are interested in joining us and haven't already emailed us, shoot us an email. Our email is in the description box for this video below. And let us know that you want a link to that Zoom meeting where we will just visit. It's no pressure. Um, we try to simulate as if we were sitting together at a coffee shop, at least that's what we tried last time. And um, then what I ended up doing last time was anybody who wanted to, if you didn't want to, you don't have to. Um, but I just went along the who was on my screen in what order and called on you if you wanted to share what you were doing for your whip or if you had a finish you wanted to show and tell, whatever. Just visit, tell us where you're from, how long- And we kind of did a little bit more of that um, introduction because everybody was kind of new to each other, which yeah. if we get a lot of the same people, doesn't necessarily have to happen that way. We might, it might be freer, more time to talk about other things. Yeah, that's true. I don't, know who, I don't know who the emails are from, if it's repeat people or- A lot of people said, oh, I had so much fun. I'd really like to yeah. do it again. Yeah. So that was encouraging. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it, having something fun. I better put it on my calendar. It's not up there. Um, so new planner. Something to put on my. I know. Look at this. I have like an actual calendar, and there's actual things on it. <laughs> um, so we are hopeful that people will want to join us for that and grab your coffee, bring your stitching, stitch or don't stitch, whatever you would like to do. I tried to stitch a little, but yeah. Do you realize that? Um... Yeah, that'll be the, the end of the second week of April already. I know, crazy. Yeah, oh, well, time, it's very mystical. Yeah. yeah, well, I have a ton of things to go do. I have a, my kids are all coming over for dinner tomorrow, except for Sarah and her family. So I've got to get my house picked up. I've got to bake, I'm gonna make the scalloped corn recipe today the magic just reheat it tomorrow yeah. and um make the cake i'm making a strawberry cake so yeah sounds good nice. laundry vacuuming you know yeah we did some good cleaning i did some really good cleaning today before we recorded mm -hmm. the house looks really nice like, i don't want to touch it i want everybody to just stay down at the neighbor's house and play all day yep we are gonna have we're doing every Easter, we have done the last several years, like a bonfire in our front yard, the neighbors all have come and we do a little like sunrise service early in the morning. And then our neighbor always they have had a family tradition forever of making homemade donuts. And what else does she make? There's something else. Oh, oh, even better than these donuts are the homemade fries she makes. Oh, oh right. my gosh. Hey, what a funny thing. Don't I don't, I don't really know how their tradition exactly started, but they well, probably could have fried. Thing. So they fry donuts and they fry potatoes and everybody just sort of crowds around the counter and grabs a plate and sits somewhere at the table or along the bar. I'm bringing an egg dish and a fruit salad. I decided last year we needed a little protein. I needed a little protein to go with that. So I brought eggs and, you know, cheese and stuff. So I'm going to make that ahead tonight and put it in the fridge and bake it in the morning while we're out at the fire pit and I'll make the fruit salad tonight. Then we'll go to church and then our pastor is having like a barbecue thing in the afternoon that we're gonna oh, to church. we didn't make reservations so yeah have to do that maybe we'll watch it in the morning i did not buy easter dresses for the girls they sort of snuck up on me and usually i buy them one and then last year was we didn't and then this year i did last year i was just thinking back i wasn't even gonna do easter i was in such a i know i think a lot of place that my kids are all like we'll do it mom this time this year we'll do it well this year I'm doing it again <laughs> I'm also I also do a little brunch but um for anybody that's around and right now it looks like just Sam and Ashley are going to be here so we have cinnamon rolls and I'm going to do an egg dish and sausage legs Sam loves sausage legs. so it'll be a pretty low-key day and our dinner's just ham and easy stuff to do so it's not like Thanksgiving or yeah I don't have to cook a meal usually what we've done in the past is we'll do church and then people will come here for a dinner after later you know in the evening and I'm not doing that this year which is weird feeling but actually really nice like mm -hmm. just really nice so we're yeah. gonna come home our like we love the tv show the chosen we talk about it to everyone we know 
um, it's not on like a regular network show. So it's kind of hard to describe how you can access it. But if you Google The Chosen and you want to watch something that shows beautifully the life of Jesus and his disciples, um, they're releasing the first episode of the second season tomorrow. Oh. And we're really excited. We've been, it's been like a year. We probably watched the first season a year ago and the girls still ask to rewatch it because it just is funny and they're sweet and they're nice and they're real. Curious. Like it's really it's real. Really, um, it's like real people. <laughs> yeah. Not we romantic watched, guys. We watched a few with Sarah and Jesse and there's, you know, and, and it really, the actor that does the part of Jesus is, is it like a real, <laughs> He acts like a real human being, like you would think he would have been, right? With yeah. the hubby powers, yeah. but, but very moving in a mm -hmm. very moving. I was really surprised because a, a lot of, I'm sorry. I usually don't pay much attention to stuff. A lot of Christian productions and stuff like that are just, they're cheesy or they're just over the top and- Or I preachy, just, sometimes yeah. they're really preachy. <laughs> this doesn't have like, that flavor at all to me. I really did it. In fact, I watch. feel like you might enjoy watching this whether you were a Christian or not. Like I, it feels like it's quality production. Yeah, it's very well, well done. Very well done. Um, I was just watching an interview with the producer and the guy who acts in, who plays the part of Jesus just on Instagram today. They did like a little like thing and they were talking and they talked about how the first thing people say all the time is thank you for portraying Jesus who seems like a real person that it's yeah. the Jesus I know, which is what I, I said after we watched the first several episodes, I was like, that's the Jesus I know, like personally, that's who I know. Yeah. And um, they really did that very intentionally. They put in a lot of humor because I think, I think God has a sense of humor. Like he made, and he, not slapstick, not slapstick. No, no, but like really no. funny, genuinely funny moments and things. And, yeah. Um, but yeah, I forget what I was going to say about that interview oh the interesting thing that the producer commented on he said that people seem to feel Jesus divinity more strongly by seeing his humanity yes. trade more relatably and I that like was a perfect way to phrase what I feel about watching this actor play so the this last movie. episode that we watched with you and I forget which one it was exactly but I remember at the end I was crying Mm -hmm. And it's a Bible story that if I read it, I probably wouldn't have necessarily cried reading it, mm -hmm. but the way it was portrayed was just so real and moving that, mm -hmm. um, and yet at other points in that episode, I'm sure we were laughing because I think also I, t I tend to think of, oh, you know, early Christian church, early Christian days, the Romans, life must have been terrible, so <laughs> somber. I never really think about these people as actually having like real lives and maybe humor and joy in their lives. You know I mean? <laughs> right. You know? Like <laughs> they're actually just did, like me, like we did during 2020, right? I mean, yeah. it was terrible, but we managed to find life goes on and life went on for those people. And I, yeah. I, that really struck me when we watched that, mm -hmm. is that, you know, I'll see if I can figure out a way to link something in the description box in case you're listening to us, like gush about this show that I love so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of ridiculous how much I love it, but, um, if I can't figure it out, if you just Google the chosen, it'll take you right to like how you can, you can watch it for free on your phone through like an app, or you can cast it like to your TV. If you know how to do that, there's usually directions on the website. I don't know. Jesse figured out how to do it. So I haven't even really done it myself, but I'm sure I could have figured it out. I think we casted it here at home. Yeah. So anyways, that's a great recommendation on Easter weekend if you have yeah, some time to yeah. kill and you want to see it's not like specifically the Easter story of Jesus you know, death and crucifixion or anything but it is it will eventually move there I think they're hoping to do six seasons so they just started on season two and it's yeah, yeah beautiful so yeah anyway, okay I'll stop talking about that okay. <laughs> just a little plug we'll watch you plan on doing because we're so spiritual, we've been watching the Mission Impossible movies every week. Well, I don't think that watching The Chosen makes me so spiritual. Also, we don't only watch The Chosen. I, <laughs> and I'm also, by the way, if you don't follow me on Facebook, watching, I, I finished Mary Tyler Moore. I finished the whole 11 seasons of Frasier, seven, seven seasons of Mary Tyler Moore. Now I'm starting Bob Newhart. <laughs> 
from my childhood. We are watching, huh? we're watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which is a Marvel Universe oh, show that we've never been years ago. Yeah, it's fun. I uh, like it. It was funny, though, when I posted that on Facebook, how many people in my Facebook sphere have watched a lot of old, old series mm -hmm. that are maybe my age group or maybe even some a little bit younger, but have gone comfort. back. It's like having food. comfort food, probably. Yeah, yeah. And it's interesting to watch some of these older shows as an adult rather than as a teen, because like I was telling dad, when I finished up Mary Tyler Moore, you know, that show was like revolutionary because it showed a single woman that, you know, yes, she wanted to get married, but she doesn't ever end up getting married. She's a career woman. And that was like groundbreaking in TV yeah. uh, back then. And I remember that being kind of my focus and, oh, look at the funny characters because there was always, you know, humor and but what I didn't realize, what I really picked up on this time around as an adult was how much her coworkers, the supporting cast, loved her as a, not I mean, on the show, like as a fellow coworker, they mm. adored her. She was a good person. She was, you know, and I just remember thinking this time around, well, you know, they recognized that even though she was a career woman, she was also soft and caring and and very loyal and very truthful. And I don't know, it just really hit me because that's not what I picked up on when I was a kid watching it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Bob Newhart, I don't remember. I've only, I'm at 66 episodes in, but they're dealing with, um, I don't think they ever do end up having a child, but it's already starting. They're like married three years when the series starts and they're having, you know, fertility issues, which mm -hmm. I would never have picked up on as a teenager really as being a big deal. But as an adult, that really hit me when I watched them. Mm -hmm. So these mm -hmm. sitcoms were, they had a little bit more to them than what I think we think of as sitcoms back in the day. Mm -hmm. And he's so, I love Bob. I don't Newhart. think I've ever watched the Bob Newhart show. I don't um, know how much I've ever seen Mary Tyler Moore either. I should probably go watch. I should probably yeah. watch them. Yeah, they're oldies, but they were standbys. So mm -hmm. I'm not alone, I guess, in watching my, my oldies. So, well, we probably should wrap this up. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. Thanks for watching. I hope we have, we hope you have a great week. And we'll see you Saturday. If yeah. you want to. Yeah. yeah. It's coming Saturday. If you want to shoot us an email. So we make sure to get you the zoom link. Oh, and if for some reason you don't get, you email us and you don't get one email again. And just in case your email got lost. Okay. Have you responded to the ones? No, no, I'll just, no, I haven't had time because there's several of them, but um, okay. hopefully by Wednesday, Thursday, I'll have a Zoom meeting set up and you should get an email. So if you don't hear from me by like Wednesday or Thursday, you can shoot me another email. I won't be at all offended. Okay.